welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today we're going to be talking about some upgrades we've made to our project boat. It's a 217 Blazer Bay and we're focusing today on the trailering aspects. So we got this boat, sight unseen, added some electronics, did some work on the engine, uh, different things, getting it ready for fishing. And we noticed a couple things on the trailer that needed to be addressed. Uh, first off, when we launched it, uh, carpet was not fully covering the bunker. That's what they use in outdoor carpet generally. Sometimes rubber, sometimes roller. But in this case, it's just a wood um, piece of two by four and it's got carpet over it and that connects to the trailer. So that's a pretty basic fix if you've never done it before. We launched the boat and just while we we're at the ramp, when the boat was off the trailer, we bought uh, some outdoor carpet ahead of time and used that to cover the bunkers. I like it so it fully covers the wood. I don't want any gaps. And you also want to cut it so it's wide enough to stretch over the side. Because you're going to put the nail in the side. It's a little stainless nail or galvanized nail you can use to hold it into the wood. Okay, Definitely don't put it on the very top because that will scratch your boat up. Also, if you get tempted to wrap it around and nail it to the bottom, you gotta keep in mind if your nail's too long, it's gonna go up and also scratch your hole. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough carpet to stretch over the side and nail it to the side. I wouldn't nail it obviously to the top because you're gonna have part of a metal piece that's gonna scratch your hole. And also if you were to nail to the back side, remember that nail's going up through and if your nail's too long, you're gonna have a piece of metal also sticking up that's gonna scratch up your boat. So just play safe, nail it to the sides. Uh, pretty simple fix. We've done this for our little boat. We've done it for our big boat. If it's starting to wear. You can always just put it over top of the old carpet. You know, that's certainly no issue there. Then we fix the trailer lights. Trailer lights are notorious. They don't ever seem to last long on a boat. But there are a couple things we've learned over the years that seem to make them last longer. I'm going to include a link to the brand that we've used. It seemed to be a pretty good brand that's held up. Another big thing is when you're putting them in, you're going to want to heat shrink the wires that you've connected to the lights that run up the trailer and then connect to your, your vehicle. But not just any heat shrink, I've found using a good high quality heat shrink that has adhesive on the inside really seals it. We used to use old, use old regular heat shrink, no adhesive, and I don't think it fully sealed it. So I would recommend getting the kind that has that adhesive on the inside that really attaches everything, holds it, keeps water from getting in there. Lights are color coded with uh, brown, green, and the others yellow and brown. And what you want to make sure is you get them on the right side of the boat. Otherwise, when you turn your signal on, if it's on the wrong side, you'll be signaling on the wrong turn and uh, you could get dinged. That's not good. So your brown and your green go on your starboard side. Starboard side. In case you guys don't know what starboard side is, if I'm driving the boat, it's the, it's the right side. And then the port side is the left side. So we're gonna put the brown and green on the starboard side. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten these down right here. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna tighten them down. Just get them snug and then get that lock washer to flatten out. See, I don't wanna get them too tight. I wanna, don't wanna break that plastic off the back of that light. Just get them tight. That bolt's not touching that light, I don't think. Yeah, it's off of it. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to cut me a piece of this heat shrink. It's long enough to cover those wires. Like that. Oop. Trying to keep up with the two guys. Unlike I am done. There we go. Two pieces of heat shrink. You can tell they weren't all that crazy close together. But what you want to make sure is you put them on there before you uh, splice your wires together because otherwise you have to take them back apart and do it all over. Well, you might be thinking that's good practice. I'm more for saving time here. All right. So I got them over here. I'll make sure we get our wires in the right spot, green to green. Put that on there like that. Twist them together really good. getting tight now lay them over there and then i'm gonna bring my heat shrink i'll get my heat shrink gun here in a second 
I'll heat shrink those together. Same way with this one. Put your tube back in there. Find your brown to brown. Twist them really good and tight. Police always likes it when you have your wires working. Uh, all right, I'm gonna grab the heat shrink gun. I'll be right back. All right, make sure you don't touch the side of that heat shrink. All right, so what you want to do is make sure that it shrinks down on your wire, which it did. Nice and hot. And if you don't run it too long or you'll melt your wire, that was starting to get black, so. But this is a good thick heat shrink. If you don't get a good thick one, it doesn't, it just doesn't uh, seal the water out very good. Yes, the heat shrink is on. And then what I'll do is I'll probably pull that wire so it ain't dangling out too bad. Put it up in here and tighten that, that harness down a little bit, keep these up, apart. But you wanna make sure, like on that, make sure it doesn't melt all the way through. Mine melted a little bit, but not all the way through. Run that through there. And while uh, that light's done, I'll, do, I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. And then hopefully we will be good and have some travel lights. So part of this build wasn't just fixing things, but making it better. This trailer didn't have any guide poles on the back. And that's not necessary, but guide poles help for a couple reasons. For one, they make sure your boat's lined up. You know, you could get the front of the boat, you know, attached to that hook right there at the winch. And the back could still be off. And you could have a boat that's tilted or all kinds of stuff. You know, I've... With this boat, originally when we were loading it, I'd go to the very back of my dad when he started to pull out and I'd just make sure that we were lined up. But that's something you don't really want to have to do every time you want it to line up correctly the first time. So I wanted to add some guide poles. Now the other thing that helps is backing that trailer down. See when there's no boat on the trailer, it's hard to see your trailer. But if you add guide poles that stick up, well now you can see where the back of your trailer is easily when there's no boat on it. This is really helpful with all kinds of small craft like jet skis and things of that nature. So it kind of has a double function. It helps you load the boat and it helps you back the boat down, boat trailer down. And it's kind of an iterative process. You see we bought some guide rails, pretty cool. Uh, just from I think Academy, but you can, you can get them anywhere. Pretty basic and simple to add on. But they came with these short poles. And what was happening is it cleared the back when the boat was on the trailer out of the land. But keep in mind when you back it down, it's going down deeper and it's lower than what it sits when you pull the boat out of the trailer. So these were so short, they would actually get up under the side of the boat at the bow because you know the bow sitting high and the trailer sitting low when you first come on and it was uh, causing issues. So simple fix, we took those black pipes off and went to Home Depot or whichever store you want to go to, got a basic, you know, I believe it's two inch PVC and just stuck it over the metal portion of the pipe. Now they're nice, very tall, so they easily stay above the rail, they guide us on, we can see them, and it was a great improvement. Basic stuff like that will really help your boating experience. You can always take things better. I've seen some people where they've got like a little foam thing that kind of rotates. Uh, I guess keeps from scuffing the rails. Not a big deal on this boat, but there's always ways to improve. Those are some things we've done to fix up this trailer, improve it. If you guys got any other questions or doing a boat build of your own, let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Real Hazardous.